Hello everyone, welcome back to the Angler's R series. I'm Aaron from Shimano, Singapore, and today we'll be talking about everything light, from salt water to fresh water. So let's get down to it. Alright, so the first question, Siva Kumar asks, what is the most appropriate setup for shore egging game? Siva Kumar, we recommend using the Sephia BB range because it is the most affordable product range in Shimano dedicated to egging. In this range, you have your rod, reel, mainline and leader. So for the rods, we have a range of lengths, anywhere from 7 feet 6 to 8 feet 9. And as for the Sephia BB reels, all the reels in the Sephia BB range are shallow spool. So everyone please take note, if you want to do egging, you must use a reel with a shallow spool. A double handle is optional, but then the shallow spool is essential. So for the main line, you can use the Sephia 8 main line. And for the short leader, you can use the Sephia short leader line. Right, so with this setup, you can comfortably cast and work eggies between the sizes of 1.8 to 3.5, which is very suitable for our Southeast Asian waters, as the common sizes used are usually between 2.2 and 3.0. So I hope that answers your question, Sibakuma. Alright, so let's start with question 2 by Muhammad Faiz bin Rusli. He asks, what is the best main line to use for light game on seawater? Fluorocarbon lines, monofilament lines, or braided lines? Well, to answer that, this depends on how light you are referring to and also the species that you are targeting. If you are looking to start, say, shore arjing, we will recommend using polyester lines such as the Shimano Sight Laser Line. However, if you are looking to do some boat arjing, we will recommend using PE lines because you will never know what will take your lure. With PE lines, it is light enough to cast far and sink fast, yet strong enough to give you a higher chance of landing the fish. Very, very reliable. Alternatively, if you're intending to do just an all-rounded light game fishing, we will still recommend using PE lines, as you will be able to cast a wide variety of lures of different weights and sizes. So for floral carbon lines such as the OSHA FC, it will be a bit too expensive if you fill the whole spool with just fluorocarbon lines. And while monofilament lines may be more affordable, you will find that you have lesser lines than you need as compared to using PE lines. And so I hope that answers your question. So next, we have Jay Yu who asks, how do you estimate a cis hook size versus jig weight or jig size in light jigging situations? This is a fairly straightforward question. So Jay Yu, while it is mostly personal preference when choosing the size of your assist hook to pair with the jig, we recommend using double assist hooks for light jigging. Right? A double assist hook where it is about half the size of the jig is a good length. So I hope that answers your question. Okay, so for our fourth question, Nabar asks, if I am using a BFS setup and I hook up to a big fish, what should I do to prevent the fish from straightening my hook and throwing it off? Well, it is a very common situation that you're describing here, Nabar. Because the big fishes, they do love smaller lures, especially those in high pressure fishing areas. But our recommendation is to adjust your drag accordingly. Loosen the drag till it is just enough that the burst from the fish will allow some line to exit the spool. Then, tighten it just a bit when you need to retrieve the line, making sure you keep the tension and do not let the line slack because that is a free pass for the fishes. Other than that, you just have to be patient and pray hard that the fish doesn't jump or shake your hook off like a top. So I hope that answers your question. Alright guys, we're heading into the last question of the day. Jimmy asks, does the tip of the rod really matter for light game fishing? What's the difference between solid tips and tubular rods? And how does it affect the fishing experience? Well, firstly, it depends on how light you are going Rods with solid tips may help in detection of bites depending on your fishing application. For example, if you're talking about arjing, many people prefer to have solid tips, while for egging, shore egging in particular, tubular tips are more commonly used. So solid tip rods consist of a separate tip usually made of either a glass fibre or carbon fibre material, whereas tubular tips are built hollow throughout the rod. So I have with me here the Shimano Cross Mission XR rod. So this is quite a special rod because it is a three-piece rod with the third piece being the tip, just the tip. So let me show you. So the rod, when you purchase it, it comes with two tips, okay? One tubular and one solid. So let me show you the solid tip. It is very supple. 
It is very good for detection and very, very sensitive for small and light lures. And for tubular, it's more suitable for larger lures and heavier lures because it is more stiff, as you can see here. To answer your question, if it matters or not, it does matter, Jimmy, because um, it depends on size of the lure, the weight of the lure, and how sensitive you want to go. So I hope that answers your question. All right, everyone, that's all for today. Thank you all for the questions submitted. If you found this video helpful, please share this video to your friends. And if you liked the information that we have shared, please do not hesitate to give us a thumbs up. And do not worry if your question wasn't answered. We have more topics coming along every month. So follow our socials and stay tuned because you might just be the next lucky winner. Bye!